Welcome to episode one of Uncontained. I am Aaron Static Render, and this is the first episode. You found it. Congratulations. Something that's been in the making for a long time, and I actually had the privilege to sit down with comedian Tom Garland for the first ever episode of Uncontained. We sit, talk about his time on tour with uh, Preston Lacey, Steve-O from Jackass, and uh, maybe even the makings of a reality show about the comedy scene in Iowa City, Iowa. We also talk about his acting debut and connection to uh, Saved by the Bell. I'd like to personally thank you for taking the time to check out episode one of Uncontained. And please, after the show, rate and review in iTunes and share it with your friends. With no further ado, here is comedian Tom Garland. Enjoy. Welcome to Uncontained. I have comedian Tom Garland on the line today for a first episode of Uncontained. How's it going, Tom? Hey, not too bad, man. What's up? Thanks for having me. Not bad. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, First time we recorded, it didn't, uh, the audio didn't turn out right, so got to do it again. So thanks for making the second appearance on the first episode. Dude, thanks for having me. First episode, too. Congrats. Uh, it's been a while since we talked like this, interview style. It was back when you were on uh, KRNA in uh, in Cedar Rapids. It it has been a while, man. That that was a uh, that was a good interview though back then, man. And uh, how long ago were you, you were you in Iowa? Even how long have you been out in LA? It's been what five years uh, now. I'm I'm actually up in the Bay Area. Okay. Uh, no, it hasn't been that long. I've been out here for three years, okay. but I came back and visited. Uh, two years ago october right on and you were with krna so, for seven years you said for seven years seven yes years, that's, man. Right. that's crazy so i interviewed you i've interviewed some uh some bands i, I interviewed Corey taylor from slipknot while i was there oh that's cool I also man. i just saw a video of slipknot playing uh ricky martin have you seen this I did. I was <laughs> I was expecting them to like meddle it out or something. Right, so it no. just goes they just straight played through, it like living the vida loca. You think it's him? Yeah. It's... <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, when's this gonna get heavy? Right. When's this gonna get heavy? When's Corey gonna scream? No, he just went all Ricky Martin. They don't give a shit. That's just what it is now. Now it's just that like, is that we're so big we don't give a fuck. Which good for them. I mean, they're just from Des Moines. I think that's the cool, right? I mean, that's yeah. where they're from. I think that's the coolest thing. Yes, ever. And them actually just doing it straight up Ricky Martin style. Mm-hmm. It's almost more metal than meddling it out. It's because people right. would expect them to a, throw to metal in it, it just, and they'd be like, "What the hell." They just really don't give a fuck. That's, that's what how I'm far metal they are. They're so metal. They play pop music now. <laughs> Next week he's gonna come out naked on a wrecking ball. Just probably yes. There. Michael yes. Jordan jersey panties. You know whatever Miley was wearing. That was weird. Man, I I really don't want either vision. <laughs> Corey Taylor or Miley Cyrus. I think Miley should wear one of those masks. They should make a Miley mask. That should be one of the guys. One of the guys should just be Miley's drugged out face. There's Clown and then Miley. Just like Miley Miley at the end of a weekend. Just her face all drugged out and nasty. Yeah. Yes. uh, Billy Ray, what did you do? Enough Miley Cyrus talk, Tom. (laughs) Bringing down the podcast. So, what have you been up to, man? You've been on the road lately? Yeah, I just got back from uh, I just got back from North Carolina, and uh, and I was also in Alabama for a night, and uh, took a nice little three night uh, three night run out there with another comic. His name is Bill Blank, and uh, I work with Bill a lot. We've done like I think it's uh, I keep losing track or screwing it up, but I think we've done like seventeen or eighteen states. I think this is our eighteenth. Oh wow! Yeah. So he's been really good to me, man. Uh, it's if I didn't have that going on, uh, I definitely. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't be in the game, but I definitely it would be different and harder. <laughs> definitely a lot more work, work looking for the gigs because, like, um, you know, um, Bill is one of those guys that just gives me first pick on his gigs to open for him. And like when you ha- when you start getting that with different headliners letting you do that, I, I've had different ones let me do it in the past, but. Um, Bill probably, as far as like more gigs, definitely Bill has been the best with that. And, uh, 
you know, I kind of had that with Don Zilla for a while too. And and some other dudes while I was coming up on the road, this Eric O'Shea guy was helping me out like that with colleges for a while. And uh, when someone starts saying like, yo, your schedule is my schedule, that helps so much, you know, because then you can, yes, it's like all those dates and then you go like, okay, I'm going to do those dates, but then I'm going to find mine on top of that. And then so then your schedule all of a sudden looks full and it is full, you know, and, and, and you've got, you know, you're not making a lot of money, hardly, if any, but you're getting through, you know, uh, <laughs> and that's kind of like how it is with road comedy at first. It's just very day to day. Uh, yeah. But if you just keep in mind, like, you know, it, you're going to come out on the other side, um, then it's, it's not as bad, you know, it's, it's more just like trying to ignore it the whole time. Uh, which is you know tough to do, but it's it's kind of like being a radio station DJ, right? Well. I mean, I'm sure you, you <laughs> get it. Yeah, all all forms of entertainment are like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, hell, when we, you know, I I remember just thinking when I was younger, like how uh, how big a radio station must be, and you know how elaborate it has to be inside of there, and then you get into them, and they're just like these little booths, you know. Yeah, you just these little, and you know, and like some of your stuff, you were like pre-recording them, right? So you could go. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything to save money for uh, cumulus, right? You know? Right, like, exactly. Uh, but I mean, they're just they're like, all why pay you the full mm-hmm. five hours that you're yeah. on air when we can pay you an hour and a half? And why have six know? DJs when we could have three and just different shit? And this guy could do sports too, and they won't. No one's gonna know the difference, or or why even have yeah. DJs at all? Like, there's some of them. I think that 100, you know, they're that. Uh, 100 it's like 107 or something like that here it's one of the new pop stations in cedar rapids it's all just digital it's all just a fucking computer that runs it the whole time which is like i guess if you're the guy that owns it what do you give a shit but like you know at some point that kind of gets sad when uh when and there's they not wonder that human why yeah they wonder why radio is a dying uh a dying art you know a dying form of media it's just because corporate's trying to make money off of it, but by doing that, they're losing money. It's hard know? to want to change that kind of stuff, though. Like I, you know, I studied uh, journalism and and that sort of stuff, and I I did freelance for KCRG for a while, and you know, when you they they want to clean. I mean, you don't want to fix what's not broken, you know. And then people start telling you like, "Oh, radio's not working, and the newspapers not working," and you're like, "Well, it kind of is." You know, so yeah. we're not just going to get rid of this until we know for sure that this is out and something else is in. And there's always these fads, man. This stuff comes and goes, you know, when you think of like what, what MySpace was like. And then people make money off stuff like that, obviously. But um, but the people that rush to it, like, oh, this is my this, this is my ticket in or my ticket to followers or to, to sales or to, you know, to fans or whatever. Like some of them, they work, but others, you know. I'm just I I finally got to the point with the social media and all that stuff. Like I I just want to have fun with it again. I spent so much yeah. time just trying to get networking and get you know that I I realized I was like starting to lose sight of writing jokes and putting out material and and the thing is is like I don't like putting it out that way. I don't like I'd rather put it out on the stage and that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years and why I've been doing well. But you know at the same time that's what the people want they they're like okay i'll follow you after your show you know they see you and then they don't see you writing anything afterwards and they're like what and the they want to see you testing jokes right. out they online want it on, yeah, and all they that good test stuff it out on there too and, and it, it, it's a lazy thing for me to turn around and say you know oh, i don't want to change you know i don't want to podcast or i don't want to uh, do so you know so i started snapchat and uh i'm getting i've been getting pretty crazy on there it's I like that one because I don't think my family knows how to use it yet. <laughs> you know, that's By the getting other thing pretty too. crazy on Snapchat, does that mean you're just sending dick pics all over right, the place? Right, that, it's just That's what Snapchat's nudity. for, right? No, I took a shit on there and smoked some weed. I mean, it has been pretty tame when you really think about it. But just like, um, and that's not all just shock value crap that I'm trying to do. I just, I want to give an actual look of, uh, I want to use it to give a look. I didn't realize that I talked shit about it and I didn't really ever realized that you could do video on there like that and i really like that because you know that's originally what got me into wanting to be funny was i would do these little jackass imitation videos when i was maybe like 14 or so you know 13 14 yeah. like everybody did back then and uh oh, yeah. yeah and and you know like early i i had videos before youtube it was a website called put file 
file and you could put stuff on there and i remember putting stuff on put file and then youtube came out and then that went crazy and um and you know now all of a sudden you you know cell phones and all that shit but yeah uh, yeah i've always i've always really liked the um you know having the fun silly videos and those are fun because they're just little 10 second little clip videos so i've been having fun with that i'm trying to do more video from the road and and stuff and you just to see like the crazy people in the you know like i i don't think i do it justice sometimes either on facebook or on you know instagram or any of that stuff on like uh, you know showing people what it's like out there the one thing you really find too is that the rest of the country is all really the same i mean i don't know if you felt that since your move but you know you're just on one couch or another it's just <laughs> it's all the same like there's there's corn there's a lot of the man. same it's things all, yes. yeah the whole country's just iowa and then the corporate world has really done that you go someplace and and you're like where are you guys going to eat and they eat at olive garden too and they go to red lobster they have the exact same town you do because they have the same corporations you do they don't have unique things anymore you know you go to one city it's just like another city because they got a bubble gum shrimp too you know it's all it's all mcdonald's it's all uh corporate mush it's it's weird you know unless you go to berkeley right then there's, <laughs> right. there's none of that stuff there right. like it's exactly. like you can't find, like the only <laughs> name like chains that you'll find there you'll find like uh walgreens cvs uh yeah they, even that the gas stations McDonald's and all that and are getting all the and the and the convenience stores even are all getting uh to do the same. Most of it's just mom and pop type stores, which is kind of cool and all, unless you want a target, you know. But, I mean, I was in Alabama. The one of the snaps I did was just like film me. I would like to film in the bar we were at in Alabama, and it just completely looked like Iowa, dude. It looked like I. I mean, I honestly could have drove. I could have drove down Edgewood Road here in Cedar Rapids and just and pulled off at, at, at like the back of a bar and filmed and been like, "Yo, I'm in Alabama." I mean, that's what it looked like, dude. Uh, <laughs> this is nuts, you know. It's so weird for me, but the travel is the cool part of the the job, though. At the same time, like that's the yeah, that's the rewarding part, you know, and, and meeting people and all that, all that. But like, I really like getting to see the country. It's been really cool. Have you ever thought about doing Periscope? Yeah, I did that. Um, my buddy, do you remember Keegan Buckingham? That's in Chicago. Yeah, he likes yeah. Periscope, man. He he does the Periscope, and we like- we did it one night at at uh, at his place. Um, in in chicago after after doing like i think we were showcasing or miking or something and and downloaded that it's fun he, he'll put it on and be like what should i watch <laughs> on tv <laughs> and it's just pointed at the channel guide <laughs> he lets, he's got people all over the world telling him what he should watch on on tv it's just crazy it's actually, that's interesting i haven't actually done periscope stunt, yet I'm but like, but it'd be cool to like periscope your show or something like that. It's that's interesting too. Um, in that like on Periscope, you can start, you can watch other people's, you know. And so one of the first things I did was start watching like Saudi Arabia and Iraq and all sorts of crazy countries in the Middle East, thinking like I'm gonna see some shit, you know what I mean? I'm gonna see it go down. And then you click on it, and they're living just like us too. They're just driving around and going to work and and shit, you know. We have this vision in our minds that it's just chaos over there, and I, I mean obviously it is, but uh, you know, they're, they, we, we think that, you know, it's a, such a different world that they're not trying to live like we are, you know? And it's like, of course, everybody's yeah. in the same pursuit of a good life. Like what, <laughs> what the hell, you know? Uh, we just think people are so uneducated and it's, it's not the case at all. So a uh, periscope's kind of cool for that. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually need to check that out. It's been something I've wanted to look into, but haven't got around to yet. Yeah, man. Spy uh, on people, you know, Edward Snowden, you get on there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Don't even need to hire a private eye. Just, uh, you know, get your periscope and Edward Snowden got a Twitter account today. Did you see that? I did not. I have not been following Snowden. So he got a Twitter account today. He's huh? on t- yeah, he's back on Twitter. Yeah. I'm sure they won't find him off that. I'm sure that's secure. No. That's gotta be probably secure. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. <sighs> Some people's kids, I tell you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's 
speaking of kids, how how did it happen that uh, you're in a kids movie? I am now? in a kids movie. You know, I thought about that today because uh, I, you know, I was. Snapping. Did you like that transition yeah, right no, there that from was great, Edward was Snowden so to kids? God damn, you were smooth. That's my, that my radio man. days right yeah. there. Oh yeah, all day. Man. That's <laughs> great, dude. You got the skill and craft. That's for sure. I. Uh, I am in a kids movie. I'm. Uh, it's a fa- a family movie. Uh, you know, it's, it's for the whole family. It's funny. Uh, it's called Up on the Rooftop, and it's uh, it's got a Christmas theme to it, and it's got dogs in it, and the dogs talk uh, with CGI, and it's actually pretty incredible. Uh, but yeah, uh, it stars. Isn't Mr. Belding in that? Yeah, it stars Dennis Haskins. Uh, he's from say he's Mr. Belding from uh, Saved by the Bell. And then uh, the guy that played Johnny Tsunami, um, Brandon Baker, is in it. Uh, Preston Lacey does a cameo. I do a cameo. And, uh, yeah, and there's another guy in it who's a, a young actor named Adam Hicks. And he's – I think it's a – I think it was an original movie. I might be wrong. It might be a, a TV show. I'm not up on Disney Channel. But um, Lemonade Mouth on the Disney Channel is what he's from. And he's got a huge following. And he's – Really? The voice of the dog in it, and he's actually really good. So, yeah, it's a, it's a cool movie. It's by. Uh, do you remember? I, I know you did comedy in Iowa. This guy, he's done some stand up. His name's Joe Clark. Uh, I remember the name. Mm-hmm. I probably met him, but uh, I, I think he probably did, man. He's, he's really talented. He's got another movie out um, with the Johnny Tsunami guy called uh, uh, It's called The Formula, and that's on Netflix and Redbox right now. It came out last year. And they shot that in Iowa City and and stuff. And so when the when he came out with this one, uh, you know, I was like, I wanted to get involved, but I've never really done any acting before. So um, he was pretty cool with me, and and uh, you know, found a he, he found a role for me as a sketchy bartender <laughs> in a scene that we shot at Gabe's. And uh, without giving too much away about it, Bruce J is uh, is in a scene as well with me, which was really cool to be able to do a scene with Bruce. And, uh, you know, after he's kind of been my mentor for the last couple of years. So that was fun. And, uh, yeah, I'll have to get him on the podcast. Too. Dude, you really should. I mean, Bruce would be incredible, dude. He's got such a story to tell. Like, yeah. yeah. If he wants to tell it though, when I, when I interviewed him at the radio station, he wanted to be interviewed or introduced as a six foot tall Kabuki or <laughs> like dressed like an Easter bunny or something like kabuki. that. Yeah, I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Well, he sometimes he calls himself the Puka, like from... Uh, Puka, that's yeah, it. Puka. That's it. Six foot tall Puka. Yeah, six foot tall Puka. That's what he is, kind of. He's kind of a Puka. You know what a Puka is? Well, he said it was like big, like a big bunny or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like, like um, it's Irish folklore that like some people that are mentally ill see a rabbit that's not there. And the rabbit like tells him it's that there's a Jimmy Stewart movie where he sees a rabbit and like Donnie Darko. That's a puka where he sees. The, OK, you know what I mean? The whole story is about like a puka in, in Donnie Darko. I mean, it's got other stuff in it, too, but that's what the rabbit is. It's a puka. Gotcha. It's making more sense now. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's like Chupacabra or something like that. But it like but it's kind of like Mothman where it like talks to him and tells him what to do and and stuff like that. Uh but, you know, Bruce is kind of a comedy guru, you know, of sorts. Uh, so he refers to himself as a puka at times. He is. I've seen him go like go up on stage, do material and kill, and then also just go up on stage and like sing like a virgin and take his leg off. Dude, I think and he's brilliant. Kill I mean, that I, way. He's, yeah. he's one of the most brilliant, if not the most brilliant comedian I've ever worked with. Uh, I mean, he's just he's incredible. Like he really knows what he's doing up there. And, like, he has his off nights like everybody, you know. I'm not saying – because people have said before to me, like, well, I've seen, I've seen him not do well. Like, well, yeah, fucking everybody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> everybody it's, – it's stand-up comedy. Yeah, everybody has their bad night, you know. Um, but he's – yeah, he's stellar, man. We were just goofing about the night that Michael Sam uh, got drafted by the Rams. Uh, Bruce goes on stage. Tim Dwight is in the crowd. Uh, at Catacombs. Tim Dwight had okay, dropped in to watch Catacombs. For those of you not from Iowa listening, Tim Dwight played for the University of Iowa, actually from Iowa City. Ah, I think people know who and Tim Dwight is, right? Went yeah, on playing the pros. He kick off of the Super Bowl one time. He's, 
That is right. Start, right, man. right on. Well, oh, yeah. I know okay. everybody in Iowa will know, right, but right, right. this is this is nationwide, I'm, worldwide. I'm telling you, man, what? the whole country's they have Tim Dwight there. They think Tim Dwight's from their town in other towns. They got Tim Dwight. Probably. Yeah, yeah, they got like Tim Dwight, Wisconsin. They just it's all Truman Show, dude. All. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So Tim Dwight's in the crowd and Bruce is Bruce is singing uh, the national anthem, <laughs> then he stops in the middle of it and just screams his head off and screams, Michael Sam to the St. Louis Rams, let's all be gay. <laughs> 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 I've never laughed so hard, man. I just, it was just his timing is so on and um, he's so non sequitur. It's all non sequitur, you know? So, you know, over time, a lot of it's rubbed off on me. I try not to let too much of it. Cause I, I'm, you know, there's nothing worse than like being somebody else's character, you know, and stand up. Like you don't want to sound like, yeah. you want to sound like yourself. You don't want to sound like anybody else, but he's yes. definitely influenced me a lot. He's a really good guy and, and he really knows his shit. So it's, it's a great tool having a dude like that in Iowa. It's probably not, you know, him and some of the other dudes, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, just Don Zilla and, you know, Bill Blank, these dudes that are, live here that, you know, Josh Alton and Willie Farrell and these guys, they've helped me out. And, you know, Tim Sullivan, tons of guys like that that are local that have given me gigs and taken me with them. And there's no other way to do it really for the road or from a place like this where there's not a city that you can get up every night, you know, so yeah, been very lucky in that regard. And honestly, like the scene there in Iowa City, Cedar Rapids area is a is a pretty awesome scene to be a part of. You know, it's like open and it doesn't seem very clicky from my experiences with it. I mean, every scene is clicky, you know, like that's what a scene is, you know, is different clicks that form together to make one larger thing, you know, and it's it's all about being able to get through those clicks and still work. You know, yeah. Like if you, uh, you can get stuck in one. I, you know, I see it a lot, dude. And I'm not saying I never have or whatever, but you can really get stuck in a click mentality anywhere, and it's not good because you get in your head and you think, you know, it's me and my buddies, and we're doing this together, and and all that. But people move, and they, they, you know, they, they get girlfriends, and things change, you know. And if you're resting too hard on somebody else's shoulder in this. Um, you can turn around and be like, well, that's where I was getting all my, all my work. That's where I was getting all my stuff. Now what do I yeah. do? You know, or, or like, that's where I was, you know, that was my pal. That was my, th- now I don't want to do it anymore. You know, I went through a period where like, I made really good friends in Iowa city doing stand up right at first, you know, and then everybody moved. And then it was like, I, I kind of had to stay around and then you get doing it. You're like, do I really want to do this? Or was I just having fun with my friends? You know, I think that's the thing that everybody yeah. that does open mics goes through at some point when you say, you know, am I, am I, did I want to be a comedian or do I just want to party with my buddies some more? Is this just another like karaoke night for me? Or is this like, is this a club for me? Or is this like a, something I want to do with, with my life? And, uh, and so, you know, the first thing is kind of like getting over being on stage. And I think that comes kind of next before you start doing it on the road yeah. and, and start doing it professionally. Yeah, that's it's an interesting uh, concept on that. I haven't quite heard it put compared open mic nights to like uh, just a karaoke night with your friend. But it makes sense. You know, I mean, like, it kind of is, though. Don't, but... don't you think? I mean, like anyone can get up. Anyone can. I mean, there's there's people at every open mic night treating it different. I guess is, you know, there to some people there's, there's hobby comics, man. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to paint that that picture of that. Um, But I guess, yeah, I I think there's definitely people there that are, they're just there for the carrier. They're just there to, you know, this is my excuse to drink. You know, this is my, my Tuesday night excuse to drink. You see it a lot because you'll, you'll tell a guy like, oh, come do this show with me on Saturday. And they're like, no, I'm going out on Saturday. You know, like, yeah, <laughs> like I do the show on <laughs> Tuesday. You know, I like it on Tuesday because I, you know, because I do the show on Saturday. Or I like Monday because I go out on Friday. You know, it's, yeah. 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 So you've been t- like, Outside of open mics, you've been uh, hitting the road, as you said. Uh, you've been out on a tour with Preston Lacey and Steve-O and 
who else, and you got something with Tom Green coming up too. Uh, tell him. Tell me a little bit about what you got going on, Tom. Yeah, man, of course. I mean, like, well, yeah, at some point, you know, you move past the open mics. And that, you know, that's kind of what I was talking about, too. You're, and and I'm, I'm not saying I'm, like, past open. I, I still open mic. You got you to gotta stay fresh and hot, you know. Um, I, I, I still MC. I do stuff all over the board. But, yeah, I've been lucky. Um, the thing with Steve-O that you mentioned was back in 2013, I did a tour um, called the original pranksters tour, uh, with Steve and Tom green at the Riviera in Las Vegas. And that really kind of helped me get started. And so since then I've been lucky enough, I've toured with like Bam Margera and I get to go work with Tom green again, which is really cool at a comedy club, uh, called Looney's comedy corner in Colorado Springs from October 15th through the 17th. And, uh, there, we got five shows there. Uh, and it'll be really cool. I've, I played the club earlier this year with Bill Blank and uh yeah I, I, you know there's a guy named eric out there that runs the club and uh he's just like the nicest dude you could ever meet and they run a cool cool room it's a really really old comedy club they had like they've got pictures of all the old comics on the wall and stuff like that and they have like an old kinnison headshot that, like oh, the, wow. it doesn't even like have his name on it it's just like his picture you know what i mean he's probably like featuring or something or like just starting a headline at the time and, uh, and yeah, it's crazy. And they've got the wall of the comics that have kind of passed away. And so it's, you know, um, for me, it's a cool thing to start going around the country. And, and it's cool because you think, like, I'm doing this impossible thing. And then you see stuff like that. And you're like, nah, people have done this before. Plenty of people have done this before. And, uh, you know, I just got to stay the course. Yeah, that from from what I hear other comedians talking about, that's the main thing. Staying on stage is the biggest challenge to, you know, becoming successful. As long as you stick with it, you have a good chance of making it to some extent. Yeah. You got to decide what making it is to you too. You know, like where you find satisfaction in it. Like right now to me, just making it to tomorrow is making it to me. Like every day that I get to say, like, I'm just doing stand up comedy and this is, you know, solely what's doing it for me then that's fucking awesome to me i you know i didn't think that's possible so uh yeah but i mean for other guys it's you 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 want different stuff for me i'm like you know give me my christmas dog movie and the three lines and i'm i'm happy as hell you know (laughs) (laughs) but you know uh it it just depends on what you and you know i don't plan on stopping anytime soon either so you know i know good stuff's down the road so and like you mentioned Preston Lacey too. I don't want to forget to talk about that here. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Preston sorry, Lacey. I threw those all at you at once. No, it's right cool, there. dude. I'm, I'm flattered that you know my shit. That's crazy. I don't, I, you know, better than I do. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like Preston Lacey, I've been uh, opening for Preston and um, he's let me tour manage him as well too. So I'm kind of, uh, I've been kind of learning that in a crash course, but I've, you know, I've been on the road enough that I, I kind of know what I'm doing. So um, that's been really neat and uh, we're extending the tour which is really cool I got a guy to come in and help out with it um, his name is Frank Finelli and uh, Frank is Bam Margera's tour manager and I met Frank and he kind of really helped me I mean Frank's the whole reason I toured with Bam and uh, and so you know Frank likes me and and I, I know he's he books all sorts of bands and, and their tours and stuff and so you know, I kind of went to him and I was like, Hey, can you help me take this thing to the next level? Like, you know, we're touring in the Midwest, but we want to put this thing all over the country. And, uh, and so he's like, you know, you got to show me some stuff. And I, I did. And, uh, he was able to sell a lot of dates. Uh, I don't have the full list yet. I know we keep, uh, you and I keep going back and forth and and talking about that and I want to promote it, but I think, I think right now it's at like 30 cities or something like that is what I can tell you. Yeah. So um, Are you going to get out to the West Coast on that? or? Yeah, we're supposed to. Again, like, I don't want to drop names of cities and then not be there. Um, but And then hopefully by the time this is out, maybe we can just link the, the schedule with it. Uh, yeah, put it in the show yeah, notes. Yeah, just put it in the show notes or something like that. Uh, but yeah, man, it looks like we're going all over. It, like, it looks like we kind of start in the Midwest and work our way out to the East Coast and then along the bottom of the country and then out West and then back up Midwest okay so all right yeah and then there's like a little break in between um for maybe a couple days i think you know we take a week off or something like that in between 
at one point, but uh, it's more or less it's the entire November and December. So uh, it's definitely the biggest tour I've done and, uh, you know, large scale. And uh, one of the highlights on it, the, you know, is uh, just that for me, it's, it's such a cool thing to, you know, uh, to be able to get in front of that many people every night and that many fans. You know, it's just like yeah, the the name recognition of, of like Preston Lacey, they're coming out with him and, you know, then all of a sudden they remember, they, you know, that's a special night for them. They take a picture and stuff like that. They get an autograph, you know, they saw a guy they know from movies and then, you know, when you're the guy opening for them, that really helps a lot. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you're getting good. Like I could imagine with guys like Preston Lacey, Tom Green, the crowd coming and not really paying attention to the opener, but you're getting good, like uh, good attention during the shows, grabbing the crowd's attention. Yeah, man. I mean, it's cool. It's, you know, I, I'm also not like the, always the first opener either, which is nice. Um, I'm featuring some like direct support. And then usually I have a half hour or like 25 minutes. And a lot of times more, I think, you know with shows on that scale like 95 percent of the time they have an mc and like a couple other guys that want to do spots so yeah i mean the crowd's filing in during the mc and then it's like okay here's a guest spot or two and then usually it's like all right here's the feature and uh and by that time they're seated and they're in, they're into it you know and then okay. my name's promoted too on all the tour stuff so I mean, I, so they know who you well, are. Well, they kind of know, like, all right, this is the. They don't know who I am, but I mean, like, now that the, the sh- they know the of show you. that came to town, <laughs> now that's starting. You know, these are the two guys in from out of town, and so that that helps a lot. Usually, the other guys are locals, and then a lot of times, dude, a lot of times for shows like that, like clubs make openers, sell tickets, and help promote and stuff like that. So a lot of times, you know, you do a show, and it's a lot of friends and family out there for opening acts. So. They yeah. know they know when it's when you're not one of the the first three or so, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a bringer show. They give you the tickets to sell, that's how you get paid. And Right. And I'm not that saying that's stuff. what we draw, but I'm just saying like that's what a lot of clubs will do that just in general. Like a lot of yeah. these uh, you know, especially if you're like, you know, our Friday, Saturday shows, you know, it's no problem moving the tickets. But when a club wants to have you on like a Monday or something like that, sometimes they'll freak out and they'll put on a kid or some shit like that. So usually, no, I'm not, I'm not really dealing with that anymore where I don't have people paying attention and and shit like that. Sometimes you get it. Like if I'm in an open mic or if I'm doing my own road tour, you know, sometimes when I tour on my own and like I'm headlining and I'm at bars and, and shit, like, you know, sometimes you'll every now and then you'll set one up. And the the bar didn't fucking promote it all. People don't even know there's gonna be a show, and the guy's like sick <laughs> in the head, and he's gonna make you do it just to get paid. And so you kind of have to go up in the corner of the room and like, go into fucking TV mode because <laughs> people don't. But what I'm yeah. trying, what I'm attempting to say is that it doesn't really happen anymore on on like the Preston shows and and stuff like that. That that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Uh, on, on our first interview uh, that we tried. You were telling me about one of the craziest moments that happened while you were on uh, on tour. It was uh, chucking darts at one of the club oh, owners. Oh yeah, shit, dude. Yeah, I forgot that we talked about. Fuck yeah, we. <laughs> so sorry there. I, I'm glad we're we're uh, we're FCC safe or or whatever from cursing <laughs> because I just kind of went to Rets just now. But yeah, man, one of the the guy uh, his name is Nick Huffman, and he's a comic himself. He's a very funny guy. Uh, but he owns the Looney Bin uh, in Bradley, Illinois, and I mean, d- dude, he get he had hit us, you know, he had talked to us and said, "I want to do some some crazy stunts with you guys," and I was like, you know, we we welcome that. That's cool, you know. I want we we've had people come up from the crowd, and we've had the other openers do it and and stuff with us. We do stunts at the end of the show, and uh, and people love Jackass, man. If you want to do a Jackass stunt, I think that's rad as as hell, you know. But for me and Preston, like, we have to do the show every single night. So, like, you know, you, you want to do big stunts, but at the same time, too, you got to think, like, okay, there's, <laughs> we're going to do 12 nights of this, and you, we want to bring energy every single night. And then, like, you know, it's a drinking crowd and kind of a dr- We do stunts w- that involve alcohol, too, you know? So, like, we got to get up tomorrow. We got to drive six, six hours to the next town. We got to bring energy to that next town, you know? 
and and then we got to stay up and do a meet and greet with those people and and it's every night so our our stunts are more under control than you might think i mean they're it's they're by no means pussy i mean we're you know we've been snorting wasabi and shit you know but it's also stuff that you, <laughs> you can recover from where you're not like you know hospitalized or, or some shit and uh and this dude he's like yeah i want you guys to shoot blow darts into me like hunting blow darts and he's like, no, I've done it before. I've done it before. And I'm yeah, like, okay. I mean, like, you're the boss. I mean, we want you to pay us, you know. So yeah, shoot this shit and you. But I mean, it was funny, dude. And then like, uh, we kind of had it rigged up so that he had like whoever loses has to eat this fucking pepper. And again, the pepper was like something that was supposed to fucking hospitalize you. And I was like, I'm not trying oh, to wow. go to the ER tonight, you know, and like my <laughs> tongue on fire from this. So one of his bartenders like ate it, but the we were shooting darts into him as a as a contest. But the the bartender like you know he flubbed it on purpose. The guy's a saint, saved my ass. But <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I mean, saw he, the he, pictures he of that drawing, dart gun too. The, the dart gun and it was drawing blood. And then the next day, man, like people were talking to me on facebook and they were like that's gonna get infected he's gonna get sick he's gonna die and and, and shit and i was like nah fuck you like grow up you know and then my buddies were like dude that's probably he's probably gonna get infected he's probably gonna die and i was like yeah i know he's fucking dead as shit and so i started freaking out <laughs> like i was being negligent or something like that you know we didn't sign anything or do it i'm watching the video over and over and like I put a fucking dart in him and everybody cheers and I cheer. And I was just like thinking like, if this guy fucking dies, they're going to play this clip over and over and over. And I looks like, Oh my God, you know, and I felt so guilty. And so, um, we actually had a, we did a show, um, later that week, uh, at a venue that was close by and, and he came to that show and I was like, dude, let me see your stomach. Are you all right? <laughs> like and I talked to him afterwards again. So he's okay. <laughs> but man, I was, That's I, I felt bad, dude. And it was like, it was one of those things like we got into town, he wanted to do it. I was like, yeah, sure. Knock you, you know, fucking knock yourself out. And then afterwards you get thinking like, God, I'm, t- I was, I was tour managing. That's on me. Like, you know, just probably not the smartest move ever, but, uh yeah well, it's also you know. i mean i dude i've seen them get nuts though like the first time i ever opened for steve-o um this guy kept heckling him he's yelling steve-o steve-o and steve-o's finally like god man what are you what are you why man why do you keep yelling my name you know the guy's he's like, I, want you, <laughs> I want you to kick me in the nuts steve-o i want you i want you to kick me in the nuts and he's like i'll kick you in the nuts come up here you know and so he brings him on stage and and he gets his buddy's got the video camera, this guy, and uh, and so he's like, "All right, I want you to say into the camera, like, hi, my name is Jim, you know, and I I want Steve-O to kick me in the nuts. I know it's gonna happen. I I assume all liability, you know, like, you know, I, I I'm not gonna sue. You know, he's like, I want you to say that into the camera, and the guy goes, okay, hi, my name is, and he doesn't even get past the high really, and Steve-O fucking <laughs> kicks his nuts up into his stomach. And just fucking drops the guy. It was great. Wow. Man. Yo, it was fucking the funniest. I bet the crowd loved oh, that. Oh, they went crazy. Man. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And like, what better feeling? As I told him afterwards, I said, dude, I don't even think you probably grasp this. Because I don't know how long you've been. At the time, I was like, I don't know how long you've been doing comedy. Or if you grasp this. But I was like, there's so many headliners that would want nothing more than to kick a, head, a fucking heckler in the nuts. You know what I mean? Like, do you know how many comedians <laughs> in the history of stand-up comedy have wanted a heckler to be like, kick me in the nuts? And you're like, okay, yeah, that'd be great. And then you get to do it. Like, oh, that's incredible, you know, that just his career steered in that direction. <laughs> that yeah, that's no totally kidding. socially acceptable and celebrated for him to do that, to fucking just knock this guy's nuts awry. Like, Could you imagine Louis C.K. getting right, away Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, or, just being like, 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 yeah, like Amy Schumer fucking puts her heel David in some Chell. guy's ball sack. Like, think about that. Like, no way, dude. Yeah, Tosh, if he did that shit. No, nah, man. There's no. There's, I mean, that's like a Kramer thing. You'd be done forever. Yeah. The jackass doesn't, and it's like, well, yeah, rock on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. You know? It's like, oh, that's those guys from Jackass. Yeah, it's, it's incredible, dude. And, um... But, you know, I, since I've been around them, it's it's been kind of cool to, to see how much, you know, talent and stuff really goes into it, you know, and, and how much thought process goes into the stunts and, and all that sort of stuff to develop it and get squeeze as many laughs as possible out of it. And, 
And is there a lot more like preparation in the stunts than it appears to yeah, be? Like, yeah, like, I mean, okay, not... I'm going to do this, you do that, and like just so people don't get hurt, or is it just is it? Well, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak for the show and the movies because I've never been around that, you know, and so I don't know, I don't know about that, but. Um, and then, you know, when Steve, Steve, would do stunts and, and Bam would do stunts. I wasn't really like that involved in that. You know what I mean? They're going to do their own on shit, but like me and Preston do like a dual thing at the end of the show where we both do stunts. So yeah, we plan it out, but I mean like, but also like you kind of plan it out, but then you leave parts of it like wide open. Yeah. You know, like there's one point where like. Uh, we were doing a thing for a while where I was like, I was hitting him in the face with a chicken, like a raw chicken. We went and got a raw chicken and then I put it on my fist, you know, and I punch him in the face with it. <laughs> <laughs> but then later on in the show, like we, you know, we'd snort wasabi and, and squeeze limes in our eyes and, and snort salt. And we do the tequila stunt, man. And, uh, and so I'm fucking blind and I'm not, I, I guess as used to it. I don't know if that's the right term. Like if you can get used to that, but I don't know. You know, I'm just fucking first couple of times. I'm just dying. You know, like what? What the shit? I, I, you know, I can't see or anything. And Preston's a fucking pro, man. He takes it, he gets it done. He wipes his eyes clean. He picks up that chicken, puts it on his fist, and fucking smacks me back with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and stuff like that is like, you know, we definitely didn't go over that, but that's funny. You know, like the crowd's laughing, like go nuts. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I was doing a thing for a while. Like, he's kind of got, I, I mean, it's not even funny, but he's kind of got some almost, like, PTSD from the, uh, from doing jazz. Like, they're, he's real jumpy. They, you know, they all kind of are for, like, you know, if something goes bang, like, right next to him. They're, like, jumping out of their fucking skin. They think, you know, something's going to go off. Like, it, you know, you when they film those movies, you're on high alert, you know, like. Oh, I bet. And, and you got to think, like, it just kept getting more and more and more intense. You know, at first, they're like, oh, we're doing an egg eating contest, you know, like in the show, like, oh, you're going to get poop on you. Huh? And then by the third movie, they're like, yeah, and an anaconda is going to bite you and you're going to get flung in the air. You know, it's it got, it got fucking intense. So you definitely have to keep lifting the stakes to right, keep right. It relevant. You know, it's so, like eventually it's going to be like, where are you guys going to go with this? We were in Wisconsin and I started sneaking fireworks into the. Uh, into the show and then I pop a couple off at him you know just like the loud just loud popper stuff like nothing that was gonna hurt him but I mean he just jump out of his fucking skin and then you know of course afterwards I was like hey man I'm sorry about that and he's like no no I like it keep it in let's do that that's good <laughs> he's got a <laughs> from Missouri he's got an accent so yeah. How many of them are from the South? I know Preston and uh, Johnny Knoxville um, are. I, you know, I don't know that many. I just know Preston, Bam, and, and Steve-O. And um, Steve-O is from, like, um, he's from London, I believe. And, and, really? Uh, yeah. I've never really heard that much about his childhood. I've kind of read some stuff on it because I was a fan back in the day. But, you know, just not that I'm not now, obviously, but like, you know, growing up, I, I obviously watched Jackass and shit. And I, if I remember right, he's from London. Um, Preston is from Joplin, Missouri, where that tornado was at. Okay. And then uh, he splits time between there and uh, and Hollywood. And then uh, Bam uh, is from Westchester, Pennsylvania. And he has that big house there they call Castle Bam. Yeah. I've seen that in like the Bam show and right. all that shit. Right. It's. Let's see. Uh, burial mounds. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, I'm in a another movie I'm kind of working on is this movie called The Burial. Like, it's kind of a neat uh, thing that happened. Uh, I did their teaser trailer. So, like, you know, I, I never realized that people did this really, but this is what we had to do for that reality show that I shot, and this is what they're having to do for their movie. And, uh, you know, um, a lot of different movies and stuff do this. The they make like a, a sizzle reel or like a, a teaser trailer before the film is actually made um, with not necessarily the cast that's going to be in the film. They just make one like it's kind of like not shitty necessarily, but just kind of slap something together so that when they're going to look for investors, you know, and raising the money, they can show them something, you know, so you get, okay. you know, and you're like, you know, if you're going to invest in a film and you want to spend you know, 10,000 to a hundred thousand dollars or more, you know, credit investor, like you're going to want something for your, you know, 
for your product, you know, for, for your, for your money, excuse, excuse me, like some product, whereas it's not a very tangible thing that you're buying. Just like, that's why comedians have to have a website, you know, like you want to buy something like when you book me, you know, you want to know what you bought. Otherwise it's just Tom Garland is kind of an untangible thing. It's just a guy, you know, but if they get on the yeah. website and they see my stuff and then they're like, Oh, okay, this is what I'm buying. You know, this is here. It is presented to me, the talent presented to me, and that's what I'm buying. So that's what they want to do with these movies. So I shot, I was the bad guy in their teaser trailer for this movie called The Burial that they want to shoot in Lansing, Iowa. And the people shooting it, this guy's name is Jack Meggers, and uh, and him and this Chris Riken um, is his partner, and they're both just like absolute saints. But Jack is from, um, he's from Iowa originally. He's from like Mason City. And, uh, yeah, I linked up with them and I, I shot this trailer and Jack and, and Chris liked me and they were like, you know, you live here. And I was like, yeah, you know, and they were like, well, that's, that's great. I mean, this is a, a low budget film, but like, you know, we're, we're looking for somebody to be in it and, uh, we'd like to put, you know, some Iowa person in it. And so they haven't given me an official offer for the role yet, but, um, the business plan that they use, you know, has me in it, uh, and all that. So, Uh, it's headed in the right direction. I like, it's kind of one of those things. It's just like the reality show. Like I want to promote it, but I don't want to be excited about it at the same time. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know the different, you know, I could get written out of it or, or something could happen, Yeah. but it's headed in the right direction. They just got another a hundred thousand dollars for it, which is really exciting. And, uh, and so what we plan to do is, you know, uh, they plan to make a, the movie for around, uh, you know, uh, half a million dollars and they want to make it look like it's about a three million dollar movie so that it can run in theaters you know okay so wow. we're shooting That's... under budget but not so under budget that there's no money to it you know a half a million dollars is still a lot of money but it's not you know an ex- extreme amount of money they you know are looking at different actors and and stuff for it right now but you know obviously like the principal roles will have real actors in it and their eyes are on like doing, you know, a theater run with it, which is really cool. Um, the, uh, what is the plot of it? What's the premise to oh, it? Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, they go, it goes, through, what you can tell yeah, anyway. it goes through rewrites too, obviously is like as different investors and different people get involved, you know, you got to start compromising and being like, you know, Hey, I'm going to give you guys $200,000, but this is how we're going to do this part of the movie. You kind of have to be like, all right, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Kind of sure. You know, <laughs> and, and kind of, and, and that ended up happening with our reality show too. Originally the reality show was called small town comics. And, uh, it was about, you know, my career and, and going out to Vegas and all that sort of shit. And Bruce, and my connection with him and the Yacht Club. And then as it got going, the show ended up changing to a show called Comedy Wars, is what the the final thing we were in was called Comedy Wars. And it was about two fictitious comedy clubs that were rivals that were trying to steal comics back and forth. And it was... How how did it make... I don't have a fucking clue, bro. I mean, it really Where was the second club? Was that a a made-up club? Yeah, uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah, and I mean, ours was a made-up club, necessarily. We're a a showcase or an open mic that runs once a week, you know, like a a glorified mic, you know, like... And we were making it out to be a full-time club. And the, it, I mean, it had more to it than that. It had like drama and it had a good script, I thought. But, and like, I'm not trying to talk shit because I know that the guys, I really feel the guys that were like the producers that were trying to make it happen really spent hours and hours and hours that they weren't getting paid for. And they did because they loved it and they wanted to make it happen for us. And they yeah. wanted to, to just get us on. I honestly, it got going and I know these guys just wanted to put us on TV in general. Like, all right, they don't like this, but we're going to do this kind of thing. You know, like we're going to help you guys out and get you guys on TV because they loved us and wanted to do something cool for us. But in the end, it just got, it got too far from, I I, I think it got too far from uh, what was going on. So, um, so a little of that goes into this, this movie maybe, but, um, but yeah, so there's a girl and, uh, her like a you know father uh passes away and she's from a small town uh and this is shot in lansing iowa and so she comes back uh to lansing and uh and she's got to bury her dad and then she kind of gets involved with uh like her you know 
friends that are still back home. She was away at college and now she, you know, you know how it is. You go back home and you, you get partying with your old high school friends and the kids are kind of getting into some trouble and, and doing some illegal shit. And uh, sooner or later, the cops start to kind of get some heat on them. And so they decide that they're going to go camping for the weekend and uh, and out on this river that's, you know, runs through Lansing and, uh, and you know, hide out from the cops and that's their alibi. And so they go out on the uh, out camping and shit and they uncover like this Indian burial mound and they decide that they're going to dig it up and, and, you know, see what's inside Never trying a good to steal idea the to shit. Do. Right. No, not a, not a good idea <laughs> to do. And, uh, and they get ghost sickness, which the like, you know, natives believe is a, uh, you know, can happen if you disturb the dead. But I mean, I, you know, in reality too, like it's, you're not going to get, you're going to get sick if you dig up a dead body. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a good yeah. thing. But in this, we get sick, but we also become uh, possessed. And so the four of us become, you know, possessed and, and deadly sick um, out in the uh, out in the woods and, and turn against each other, kind of Lord of the Flies style. It's, it's very like Deliverance, uh, Lord of the Flies uh kind of comparable it's it's real creepy man it's real scary like i was getting scared when i was reading it and uh and it was fun because i you know was playing the bad guy in the teaser so like we, we shot some of the different scenes uh so they could present them like um they had these you know two girls that we're working with who we actually they were really fun and talented too but um i mean i was just scaring the hell out. i mean they were just scared shitless just because of the way it's written and then like you know, I executed it well, you know, and so they, they were jumping out of their skin. That means you're doing a good job. Right, but they're, I they're mean, we're, la we're laughing because yeah. they're just, like, jumping out of their skin the whole time we're doing it. I'm like, I'm really a nice guy. I'm so sorry. And this is, like, the one girl, the, that was the first she met me was, like, my my lines in this movie, which is my character just going completely off the handle. So I play this guy <laughs> named Tyler um, who is a, uh, he's, like, you know, the, all these guys are, like, fresh out of high school newly in college and i'm the guy that like never went to college he's like 26 sketchy dude um i steal chemicals that, you know people make meth with and stuff like that and i get him into a lot of trouble i end up being the one that thinks we should dig up the the burial mound and then um I, i'm kind of definitely the one that pushes things off the handle as uh i mean it gets pretty crazy once once the show kind of pops off uh you know it's good. It's Sounds really like good. A fun role. It really is, man. I mean, it's really cool. And then I like that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a zombie scary thing, but without it being like necessarily too, I know it, it sounds, you know, maybe unrealistic, but it, it, it's really not. It's really written very accurately as to, you know, like getting to his possession, you know, a real thing that you can wrap your mind around. I don't know, maybe, but, but the rest of it is pretty, uh, it's pretty like, yeah, this is exactly what would happen, you know? And then, you know, just about the size of a police force in a small town and just little stuff like that. I mean, and how long it would take somebody to get to you and, and all that. And, the you know, all that kind of factors into the movie as it goes without giving too much away. It's it's really good. Cool, cool. When do you think you'll start shooting on it? We're supposed to shoot this coming summer. So, again, like, um, you know, I'm I'm hoping that they stay with me for that role. They've kind of told me that they'll put me in the film no matter what. A lot of it... I think a lot of it, um, you know, has to do with budget. Like if they get more than what they think, maybe, you know, and like, you know, imagine they got a, a ton of money. I'd assume they, they want, you know, somebody that's a, an actor <laughs> in that role, you know, other than me. Uh, but, the, you know, they've told me that I, I look the part and that, um, you know, I screen tested well for it, obviously, um, through the teaser. And then now we've kind of done, as they've kind of done some rewrites to it, they want to do like script readings. And, uh, so that means I'm going to go in there and, uh, and read through the script with them. And so they can kind of rewrite it to sound like my voice. So, you know, I think it's, it's definitely, it's headed in the right direction, but again, not trying to get too excited, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a cool opportunity though, to just, see what all has to go into it in the beginning stages, even if it completely falls apart. Like it's crazy to learn what goes into making a reality show and how scripted it is and all that. And then, then this has been nuts for me too. And it's been some really cool exposure and, and Jack Meggers, the guy that's directing it, he worked for the show criminal minds and this Chris Riken, um, she worked for imagine entertainment with Ron Howard and uh, castle rock with Rob Reiner out in LA and she still has really strong connections with castle rock. And so 
that's kind of our hope with the film too as well we can produce a, you know a low budget uh film but not too low budget and get it to one of those distributors and uh, and get it out there you know that's such a big fight in the film thing like up on the rooftop they got a distributor and that's doing really well for them that's going to be in the uk and in france and germany and uh and all sorts of different countries in theaters there which is really neat to oh, know. Wow. yeah yeah which is really cool so um you know so, that'd be cool look for that over the holidays right right take a flight to for, look for airfare to france go see my movie in theaters man the way it's supposed to be seen you know don't... is it is it a way to see it here in the states it's Actually, easier like can, netflix well or... I, you can get home and uh, you can see it on November 13th. It premieres at the Paramount in Cedar Rapids for a red carpet event, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'll actually be on tour with Preston Lacey at the time. So uh, I'm going to have to miss it, um, which I'm upset about. But I'm also, you know, it's kind of bittersweet because it's a big tour and uh, I'll be excited to be on stage wherever I'm at that night. Yeah. Um, and then on November 17th, it's in the Chicago Comedy Film Festival. Um, in Chicago at the new 400 theaters, uh, it'll be there. I gotta miss that as well, but um, but you can see it there in Chicago. And then, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to speak for its distribution because I don't I don't know, but I can say that Joe's last film was on uh, Netflix and on uh, uh, Redbox, and so this okay the formula if you check that out. So I would assume this one's headed probably a similar, if not better, path. You know, it's second time around making a movie. Um, and then, you know, I, like I said, I do know it's been released that uh, it's going to do a theater run, uh, you know, in, in other countries. Um, so, you know, they didn't, it doesn't say necessarily if that means America too, but definitely, uh, definitely overseas. So that's, I, I, I'm just really, that's awesome. Yeah, dude. it's awesome for Joe, man. I mean, I, if you knew this guy, um, he's just such a hard worker. He's from Iowa, he's a good kid. And, you know, and then too, like he's not making garbage either. You know, so many of these people do. Like, I'm trying to do smaller films and and stuff like that just so I can get the experience. And you know, and I'm all about paying my dues and everything. And still with the comedy, like I we've talked, I'm still doing mics and and shit sometimes on occasion. And um, you know, I do whatever role in a movie, but there's just so much shit out there. It's just trash. You know, you read yeah. these scripts and it's just gar it's just violence and sex and drugs just to put shit in a movie. Now I've I've talked to other people that have movies with violence, sex and drugs, and I'm like, okay, I'm interested in that. That's actually a cool plot. And like you have it's well written and I can tell you're a professional. But some of it, man, is like borderline porn that's out there when you first <laughs> and, and and people enjoy making it too, you know, and they're weird and, and shit. And Joe is making a cute kids dog movie, like a G rated movie in iowa and i mean you got to see the trailer dude look um google up on the rooftop trailer it's it's awesome you, and you know it's it, it shows iowa in a really cool way and uh and this burial too is going to do that as well if it gets made so we're still trying to raise the money awesome, dude. So if anybody's trying to invest in a film and buy your where can they the uh where can they go to donate if they uh are looking to or um, invest or well, yeah we're not really doing the kickstarter thing they're only looking for accredited investors because again it's a bigger project than, than you probably would think but um if you wanted to get involved it's just the burial movie at gmail.com right now you can reach out to there all right cool man uh well it's just over an hour right now as far as time goes, so uh, probably should start wrapping up here. Anything else you got going on that you want to throw out there? Not too much, man. You can always just check me out on my website. It's just TomGarlandComedy.com. And then, you know, I guess uh, Instagram is just comedian, comedian Tom Garland. And my new Snapchat is Iowa's Just Joking. And that's my Twitter, too. I'm on Facebook, so, you know, stalk me. Me All out. right, cyber stalking is fun. Uh, thanks again for uh, joining me, man. Dude, and, thank you, uh, man. Congrats on the new show. I'm I'm excited for you and and where this is headed. I already saw a couple other people. Um, I think maybe you reached out to a couple of people on my friends list, even on Facebook, that said they were going to do this. So, uh, uh, yeah, I interviewed. Uh, like, I have an interview coming up, I believe, with uh, Dan Hampel. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and I know me and him have kind of like almost crossed paths and not cross paths it's been a weird thing where 
Uh, there's been a couple different, and I don't want to talk your head off because you just said you're trying to wrap up, but but yeah, there's been a no, couple different good. projects with him that have come up, and, and we've tried to make something work, and then then it doesn't. But yeah, but he's definitely somebody in Iowa that's doing it too, and it's cool when you see that man. It, that, that kind of stuff keeps me in it when I uh, when I see people, you know, here in, in the middle of nowhere <laughs> making a run. Yeah. in the entertainment business is always pretty cool to me. And I guess he's originally from out here in the Bay Area. Really? Too. Oh, okay. Well, then fuck yeah. him. <laughs> but, but he moved there like in 07. No, no, fuck him, man. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Fuck him. Fuck him all to hell. <laughs> oh, man. That's terrible. Okay. Well, I think you just hurt his feelings, yeah, dude. Yeah. He's not. I hope he's not listening. To, I, do you, I don't know what kind of listenership my name's going to get you, man. This might hurt your first episode. They might be like, damn, Aaron. You'd be like, oh, Tom Garland? Fuck that guy. He's the one that's out there with Preston Lacey. He can't even take a lime in the eye like a real man. Right, exactly, man. I, I wish I could take a lime in the eye at the end of this thing to spice it up. But I mean, I guess I could hear you could just hear the screams. I don't know if that does. That's like old time radio. So you, got, you got the Bud Light Lime. You could just. I am back. drinking a Bud Light Lime right now. That's very yeah. That's good. I'm jumping that down my esophagus instead of my eyes. But there, there are better beers. But you said that one was left behind. This was yeah, yeah. This guy left these at a my scavenger uh, this beer. Is an absolute scavenger beer. I am just a scavenger man, dude. I hope that that's what you can take away from <laughs> my podcast. And I'm scavenging my way through comedy. I'm at the bottom rung of every other comedy scene. And and I'm scavenging my way through this beer and this podcast and my jokes this entire hour. It, so it's like a shelter beer, you know, like you went to the like, you know, some people go <laughs> and adopt a dog. You adopted a beer. Dude, I wish someone would come and adopt <laughs> me. Oh my god, that would be great. I wish I could just be someone's shelter comedian. Like someone, someone could just, shelter comedian. Yeah, like someone would just take me in some Somebody oh, rescued me. Fucking oh, it just uh, yeah, just some dude, one of the first road gigs I ever did was this guy. And uh, I won't say his name, but I mean, he's, he's just nuts. We played this little shit bar in Keokuk, Iowa, which, is, you know, it's like an hour from where we're from. Right. And, uh, yeah. and we're out in Keokuk and I actually, you know, it was a piece of shit, but you got inside there and it was like a rock and good time. They were packed and snowy and, and we had this other comedian with us. And it was my first road gig, my first time ever staying in a hotel. And I went out with this guy afterwards and I asked him, I was like, Hey man, I, I want to be a comedian. Like, you, you know, I, I, I want to do this like a pro. And and tell me what do I need to do, like what what's tell me, what's the secret, man? Like let me in, you know. And I, I'm trying to squeeze as much information out of him as I can in one night. He's trying to drink. He doesn't give a shit, you know. And, uh, and he's already he's already the fucking hammered. But he did kill, you know. He's a funny guy, but he leans into me. I'll never forget this. And he's like, "You want to know what you got to do, man? You got to go on the road and you got to eat a different." fucking nasty girl's pussy in every town across america that's what you gotta do <laughs> you gotta go home with one of these fucking nasty bitch and eat their pussy dude and he goes he goes just don't nothing about you just fucking eat their pussy he goes i don't care how mad she gets at you whatever you do you can stay on her couch for the rest of your life <laughs> he goes you take the hotel <laughs> money, you stay on that girl's couch for the rest of your life. She's cooking you eggs and shit. You got to just, you got to do it sometimes. It's like, you got to eat pussy for comedy. I'll never forget that, dude. It was just, <laughs> it was just insane. So I, he's, he was scavenging his way across the road and, and now I am too. I know maybe not that. How's that, that advice different. working out well, for you? I'll tell you what, man, I, I, I don't, I don't take up on it too often. I, I'm lucky enough that uh, people have, have kept me away from uh, from studying myself out on the road. I don't know. How do you say male whoring? What's that? The, what's the, the man whoring, man whoring uh, myself out yeah. yeah, for, for couches. But I, I'm fortunate enough. Uh, Keegan Buckingham lets me stay on his couch in, in Chicago every time I go in there. And that, that's really helped me, you know, get in at those clubs. And so is the day Keegan gets a pussy, I'm fucked. Like, <laughs> but he, he doesn't have one yet, which is cool. So there's a that, fucking high awesome, note to man. end on. Yeah, there you go. That, Tom, that, Tom that is by the way, let me leave you with one dirty road story about eating pussy. Okay. Hey, good night. Right. Uncontained. <laughs> uncontained. <laughs> The, the dirty road stories are the best road stories, man. Oh man, it, it wasn't even something I did. It's just the way he said it, man. It was just him being like, "You got it. You got to. You got to. That's the only way." <laughs> like, <laughs> these places aren't giving hotels anymore, man. You got to eat. You got to get down on your knees. You got to work that dog, dude. Like uh, Jay and Silent Bob uh, strike back. They're like, "I live by the book. They make with the head for hitchhiking." 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they actually try to go down on Carrie Fisher, with his, which is a nun, and right. they get kicked out of the car. But uh, George Carlin goes down on the truck driver. I saw an article today that more people are trying to be nuns. Oh, yeah? God, yeah. That, that's... That's my next move, dude. If this doesn't work out... Carlin, the, the comedy nun? Yeah, comedy nun, man. I'm joining the monastery. I'm just never going to speak again. This might be my last. You might, I might quit tomorrow, dude. I might be there tomorrow. This might be the last time anyone ever gets my voice recorded. So uh, I'm glad. This, if this is it, Aaron. Glad we have I'm, this. I'm glad we have this. I, well, you probably don't. You, we've recorded this like fucking seven times. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you, this is literally for everybody at home doesn't understand this, but we've literally recorded this podcast like seven fucking times, which is not an excuse for how long I've talked either. But I, I'll tell you, man, if this is the last I, I, I ever speak to anybody, I, I'm happy I got it all out there with you. Thanks so much for having me yes. on. Thank you, Tom. And uh, then we'll put all your uh, contact information in the show notes. Yeah, do that. Put my social security number on there and get it out there. I need that. Yes, and your home address. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. There's lots going on with comedian Tom Garland, so make sure you check him out at TomGarland.com. He has some shows coming up. Um, in Chicago, he's doing a supply and demand show, which is a really cool concept. It's at the Laugh Factory. The first few people that show up, it starts out free. As you continue to go on and it fills up, it goes to $5, goes to $10, goes to $15. And then the people who waited too long, well, they pay $20 at the door. So make sure you fill that up. That is March 2nd at the Laugh Factory in Chicago. Then you can check them out in Iowa City on the 5th of March at uh, at the Green Gravel Comedy Festival. So lots going on with Tom Garland. Once again, TomGarland.com is where you can find a full tour schedule along with what all else is going on with Tom Garland. Keep up to date with him. Hit him up on social media. Let him know you heard his show here on Uncontained. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, live uncontained.